Hello guys, Blair Harrison, aka Harrison Productions here. I hope you are keeping well. Now, if you are a new viewer to the channel, I bid you welcome. If you're a regular, you might have noticed that I'm not in my usual surrounding, which is usually the living room or the glass room. Well, there's a good reason for that. That's because I have moved, and as you can tell from the sound of the room, which is very echoey, uh, it's not really finished or settled into yet. So I'm actually in the living room, and uh, I would show you the rest, but it's pretty much a mess. So this was the only place I could find suitable to film. But we're not going to talk about my struggles moving into a place today. What we're actually going to talk about is a video that came out about... Last week, I'm guessing by the time this video is out. Now, you may have seen I did a video on a Squire Classic Vibe 60s Mustang bass. What you may not know about that video was that there was actually some other material that I filmed. And what the video was about was basically my process on improving the guitar. Like, you know, actually, no, I'm not going to spoil that because uh, I'll wait till you watch the video. But, uh... The reason why I didn't include that in the previous video was quite simply, it was just too long. I think when I did the rough cut, it was about maybe 21 to 22 minutes. And the performance part where I play the bass was at the end. I think it was about the 19 minute mark, or was it 20? Can't remember. And quite simply, I don't think anyone really wants to watch a video where I don't play till about the last three or four minutes, so hump that, no. So I cut out and just mainly focus on the art, uh, you know, the unboxing part and the playing part. So what we're going to do in this video is show you that footage of me improving the guitar by, you know, improving the strings and uh, the neck feel. So take it away, Blair. Really nice. Uh, if you know any, I mean, if you see my videos, if you see me talking about Squire Classic vibes, I'll always say the necks are real lovely. The polyurethane they use just makes it not too much, but not too little. And uh, it's got to be some things I'm going to do. First thing is uh, change the strings because these are round rounds, and I'm not really that keen on them really. And I think I might do the fretboard because. It looks a wee bit dry dirt, wee bit dry dirt. So that's what we're going to do. So why don't we cut to the bedroom where I show you how I clean a fretboard. Let's go. So what you're going to need is, if you don't have the room for uh, a kitchen table, and you don't, but you don't want to ring your bed, you get this. Let's move that out of the way. You get the classic old bathroom towel, just to cover the bed up. Then you're going to need, do I have it? This. One of the best products from the Dario, in my opinion. Okay, and now we are ready to take the strings off, clean the fretboard, and take off like the fucking cellophane, whatever stuff it is to cover the pack ups. Let's go. Okay, now let's get to the actual cleaning of the fretboard. So, you will need kitchen roll. White or blue will do. You're going to need lighter fluid if you're Anywhere under 18, then you're probably best at having a parent assess you. And, if I remember what it is, it is the wax itself, which I'm using. If I can get that, oh, hit the counter. If I can get that in focus, is Monty's Instrument Food from Monty's Guitars, which is really worth recommending. Okay, now we're going to do the Jimi Hendrix. And lighter fluid, the fretboard. Here we are. Okay, I think that should be enough. Okay, now it's time to wipe it off. Uh, do two. 
Two is usually lucky. I will warn you, there will be a smell of lighter fluid, so there's a warning for you if that's your sort of thing. You don't want your room to smell like it, but usually it'll last for about maybe half an hour, as long as you remember to open the windows for a bit. If you're in the shed or whatever, then I think you should be alright, as long as you're not smoking. Right, I think that should be it. I'll just double check there. And now it's time for the instrument food. Look at that. So again, you want to get your catch and roll. I'm going to do two. And don't know, don't want to put too much. Maybe about, maybe about that much. Actually, I might put a wee bit more. About that much you want to put on. And now it's time to go down under or down on top. Don't know how the angle's gonna look from there because it's only static one still. So apologies if this is not the best. I've never done anything like this. Uh, can you tell? Oh, did me do that? Okay, now according to the video from Monty himself, or Matt in this case from Monty's Guitars, uh, you're supposed to leave this for, I think it's about 5 minutes, but I'm probably just going to do 10, just to make it, you know, um, dry out a bit, so here we go. If I can get my timer on. There we are, okay, are we ready? Okay, let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks not bad. Well, maybe if I put, hang on, a torch on, you can't even see that. Should have brought some lighting equipment. There you are. Okay, and now it's time to wipe it off. Excuse that one. Let's just get the sides. Put that back on. There. Okay, and uh, I think we are done for now. Ah, oh, you fucking bastard. Where's the fucking point of that, honestly? That fucking stuckers. Yeah. Hey, come on. Here you go, you wee bastard. Moon. Right, that'll do. Okay, so we cleaned up the fretboard. Now it's time to put the strings on. And the strings of my choice I've decided to use is these. These are the Dadario. Half rodents, uh, medium gauge string, and it should be noted. I don't know how many um, YouTubers have done this, but just to let you know, if you plan on getting a Mustang bass, you want to get medium gauge strings, not short gauge strings. Why? Quite simple. The bridge. That is why. Because on a precision and a jazz bass, you would go through the bridge. But, because it's a Mustang, 
you actually go through under so there's something to take into consideration so if you do get a Mustang base then get yourselves medium gauge strength fast and I pack the half ones because of uh, Felt Conrad uh, who you might be familiar with if you're a fan of uh, Rich Shaw's YouTube channel. I saw him use these on his precision base and I thought I'm having a bit of that because I'm not really a big fan of round rounds just you know just not my thing I, I kind of prefer it a bit flat. Now my usual go-to is uh, Grinwin strings but obviously the company that makes them don't do a medium gauge version of that so guys if you're watching can you make a medium gauge version of Grinwins for the Mustang please? Cheers. Anyway, let's get these on. And we are back. So uh, yeah, that was um, quite something. I didn't play it for about a week because on the day I filmed that, the following day was when I was going to Belfast and I was there until Tuesday. So then I came back. So at first the half rounds were a bit awkward and feel a bit, you know, unpleasant at first. But since I was away, I decided to give it, uh, well, I didn't decide. I was away in Belfast, so it meant it could uh, take time to get the strings into place. And when I came back, they were more playable. Obviously, I had to mess about with the action and what have you. But I got the bass sounding as good as I could get it and if you want to see that you can see it in the previous video so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much and I hope to see you next time when I am in a better room with better sound production and better quality thank you very much and I will see you all next time for another video take care a folks